Justin Gatlin is the latest in a long line of sprint sensations to emerge from the USA. Gatlin got a good start. Look at this man coming through now. Gatlin. What a fantastic performance Gatlin. from Gatlin. Gatlin. The ultimate goal is to be one of the best sprinters in history. And what a fantastic performance of Gatlin. And look at the time. It's the American leader, the Jamaican at the moment. He knows he is the world champion. Of Justin Gatlin is the world champion here in London. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back for another episode of Ready, Set, Go! We in the building! In the building. Hey, yeah, hey, who was that? Hold on. Y'all know who that is, man. That's my boy <laughs> right there, Rodney Green in the, in the building, man. What's going on, man? What's good, man? Hey, man, everything's good because we had 20,000 subscribers right now, bro. 20, you know what? Let's clap it up for our fans and our subscribers, you know, coming to you. You know what I mean? We want to clap it up. We appreciate it, man. We appreciate the love that y'all giving us and we're steadily growing week by week. We promise to keep giving you the information that needs to be out there so you can hear it best and all the inside information too, as much as we can. We're going to bring it to y'all, man. So, Keep on subscribing, tell your friends, your mama, your uncle, your grandmother, everybody, your neighbor, knock on the doors, tell them to subscribe. We going to be able to give you, deliver you exactly what you need. Boom. So, but also we, what we going to do? I think we give, we doing a giveaway too, right? Yeah, we doing a giveaway. We doing a giveaway. Cool. Now, and we doing a giveaway on the first person who can name two people from our RSG list. For my RSG list, watch list. Yeah. Two people. You got to name two people on our RSG's watch list. That means you got to go back and watch episodes. And then also, if you can tell us what is our drink of choice on RSG, <laughs> we, also send you, we also send you a gift as well. So, yeah. boom, first ones, and we're going to pick the winners. So, um, I'm going to take it down a little bit before we get into everything, man. Um, I definitely want to give prayers and blessings to the Johnson family, a great friend of both of ours, a mentor of both of us. Um, Brooks Johnson passed yesterday. Um, great guy. So many stories that I have um, from Brooks. Um, so many life learned lessons. I just want to say, you know, thank you, Coach Brooks. I told him to his face, but I just want to tell everybody. Thank you, Coach Brooks, and um, rest in peace. Anything, Jesse? Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. I mean, I had my time to be able to mourn and um, had some sadness of him leaving this earth, but I think now it's about praising him, especially in our sport. Our sport is a kind of sport where it's um, a quote-unquote young man's sport. And as we progress and move on and we meet the new people that are coming into sport, I want to challenge everybody in our sport to remember the people who helped pave the way. That's Brooks Johnson as well. And in my post today, I talked about how he has helped people in our sport and outside of our sport. He was a humanitarian. Over 20 kids he's helped inner city be able to find higher education. And in our sport, you know, Rod, he has always been a kind of mentor and not just a coach, but a mentor that has helped you know, so many people stay in the sport. And for me, I keep it 100 with you, but I didn't have a dime to my name. He brought me in. He said, look, man, don't worry about paying me right now. He said, I know what kind of person you are. I know what your heart is. You go out there and do what you're supposed to do. And you listen to my instructions. You'll be back where you need to be. And everything, everything will play in, into, into effect. And um, he knew it. You know how he is. He, he knew it, man. So he did. he did. He did so many things, man. A lot of people don't even understand a lot of the female jobs that's out there who are in position. Brooks helped put a lot of those first females in those positions, man. Fighting for those women, women's jobs and and that they have the same power as men. He was he was one who spearheaded that. And I just want a lot of all of us to know, women and men, to know that definitely he was a humanitarian, a leader and a spearheader of, of greatness, man. So. He is. And I know he might have been brash at times. Very. And, and his approach <laughs> might have been the most tactful in a lot of situations, but he was rememberable. You yes. always going to remember him. He's one of one. One of one. So all the people out there who know who Brooks Johnson is, be grateful. 
because he's an individual who probably has stepped into your life in some way and you are not going to forget him. I always used to call him, he's your favorite coach, favorite coach. Oh, so absolutely. Even if, even if you don't know Brooks, if you had a coach who was anywhere from like 40 and above, your coach knew who Brooks was. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Brooks was Brooks was that guy. He was like he was like Morgan Freeman. I don't ever, I don't I don't even know there's a picture on the internet that shows him. I useful. have one. I useful? have one. I have with black, one with black, with black hair. hair. Yes. No. Yes, I have one. And we got to put him, on this episode. When, when put I it up right him, now. But I showed him. He was like he was like, "Where'd you get that from?" <laughs> no, say what he said. He said, "Where'd you get that from?" Get that? <laughs> exactly what he said. <laughs> he was the only older black person. Who didn't have a problem with me using the N-word so much. <laughs> oh, because he was right there with you, huh? He right there with you. <laughs> you remember that story when we asked him if he seen Selma when we was together? And he was like, why you ask me that shit? He's like, I lived it. But I'm going to go watch that shit for <laughs> he, Exactly. He lived it, huh? He lived it. <laughs> and then he was like, Oh, yeah, he old enough to live that. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's what I'm saying. That's how special he is as a coach, man. He he actually saw segregation. Yeah, you know bro. what I mean? He actually saw situations where athletes, because of their color of their skin or coaches because of the color of their skin, were denied. Not because you weren't talented enough to be an athlete or to be a coach because of the color of your skin, you know? Nowadays, I think that we have you know, the opportunity to go out there and represent our countries, no matter the color of your skin. And I love it. You see Rashid Ad over in Ireland. Um, you see so many people around the world who don't even have to fit the, the majority of whatever their hue is in that country. They're still out there representing with pride and the country loves them. People like Brooks helped pave the way for that, man, because he stood for justice, equality, and he took no nonsense and no bullshit. Facts. Facts. So shout out to Brooks. Cheers to Brooks, man. We, we, we'll we miss you. Oh, now we're going to make it a little bit more lighthearted, man. Where we going? We're going to jump on this plane and we're going to fly over to, I see the hat on. I want to love yo. <laughs> and cheat you, right? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> is so this go... love? Is this love? <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. We're going to go over to Jamaica, man. We're going to talk about their trials, man. Um, first person I want to talk about, great strategic move, you know. She got the dust off her, off her legs in that first meet before her trials. And then she actually made the team. She got third. Very own, you know, shout out to Mommy Rocket. I'm a big fan. Shelly Ann Frazier Price, man. She gets wrapping up in third. Shelly Ann Frazier strikes again. She has made another team. Time is on her side. Yes, yes, yes. Time Do is we? on her side. She All she really had to do, man, is just make sure she was fit enough to go out there and get first, second, or third. And make the team. Now she has enough time to be able to keep training with no pressure and go out there and put on a great show for her last Olympics. I, I think that's, that was her plan. Her plan wasn't to go out there and win. And I had, she was like, you know, yeah, I'm going to try to win. But if I don't, that's fine. I just need to buy some time. That's it. Because, you know, nobody, when you get at the Olympics, nobody say national champion of Jamaica or national champion of the USA or Germany. That accolade is not really known around the world. The only accolade that, that counts are worlds and Olympics. And she knows that. She's been around the block long enough to know that. Now, I don't want to take away her competitors. Um, Shine, Tia Clayton, the young Tia Clayton, she had a massive PB in the semis and she got second place at 1090. She's a part of the, the, the cards changing, you know what I mean, with Tia. And then our world champion, Sharika, winning in 1082. So Same, same thing with Sharika. I mean, I know she's a little ahead of pace, more, more than uh, Shelly Ann is. But Sharika looked good. You know, watching her through the normal season, the regular season, she, um, she was coming on strong. You know, she was dropping little 11 O's. And now, obviously, she finished off the Olympic trials with that 1080, I think 1084, right? So at yeah. 1084 to be able yeah. to win the Olympic trials in 100 meters. So you can see that she's going to have time to be able to go back, get a little sharper and drop into those 10 sevens and possibly 10 sixes again to be able to be a formidable opponent at the Olympics. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what she left to do. I know they definitely, those three are going to definitely come together and train where they are because the Olympic gold medal is in Jamaica. And this will be... Elaine won't be able to defend 
But in her name, they those three were vowed to bring that gold medal back to Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and on top of that, anybody is listening, people have something to say and say, hey, you know what? Elaine's done or this is the end of Elaine. Elaine has come out and stayed and said she's not done. She's injured. She's down, but she's not out. So let's make sure she has a speedy recovery and have, be able to get back to the next season. And then we'll see exactly what Elaine, Elaine brings back to the table, too. So hope she gets well soon. Shoot. Sure. Moving on to this, <laughs> this is crazy, man. And I called the old boy a name before. <laughs> Moving Ooh. on to this, this man hundred. You oh, heard me man. talk about that boy Keyshane before, boy. We I, have, we both yeah, have. Yeah, I said, hey, that boy different. You know what I mean? L listen, <laughs> listen, boy. I, I'm gonna say something, right? And I know Noah <laughs> means no harm. I watched the interview where they was asking Noah if he seen what they, what they did in Jamaica. And he was like, oh, yeah, they started running already? And he was like, yeah. And then he was like, what'd they run? And it was like, he ran 982. And then he sipped his drink. And then he <laughs> said, he said, I hope that boy stay healthy. Now, Noah, I don't know if you know, uh, I know you date somebody from the Caribbean. Caribbean people, well, we hold grudges. And we remember everything. We're very humble people, but if you poke the bell, oh, you gonna poke, you gonna wake a lot of rage up. So I don't know if he meant to say it like that, but I just know Caribbean people. We don't take stuff like that lightly. So I, I don't, I don't know. Hey, listen, I have never poked the bear and I felt the rage of the Caribbean at one point in time for a lot part of my career. So I understand exactly what it is. And I remember, I remember the video actually where he was like, <laughs> he was like, he legitimately did not know the time that they ran. He was like, Oh, uh, I hope they showed me something. And then he was like, yeah, they dropped that 982. That was what, that was a semis when he saw yeah, that. Yeah, he, was yeah. like, he was like, Oh, okay. And then he you know like, what I mean? <laughs> and I heard, and I heard that I said, Oh, Oh, they're going to take this personal. They're going to take this personal. But I said, they gonna take this personal. They gonna yeah, they gonna take it personal, and now they know they got more than one dog in the hunt for that Olympic gold to bring that glory back to Jamaica, right? Um, but this is going to take Noah everything in his body to go out there and PR big. Let's just say. Key Shane is in 9-7 shape. He maintains that 9-7 shape all the way to Paris. And he's starting to show 9-7 through the rounds, right? He is going to have to up his game, meaning Noah, big time. Because now he's going to have to PR big, right? It's not 983, 982 is not going to cut it. 980 is not going to cut it. You're going to have to hit a 9-7 to show that you are here and you are going to not lay down for anybody to win this Olympic gold in the 100. You know, I think the 200 is a little easier for him, but that 100 now has come probably his biggest, his biggest mountain to climb when it comes to obtaining Olympic gold, for sure. Listen, he, he definitely, when they go to Paris, um, seeing what he's already seen, I mean, him, him and his coach are working past his PB, of course. But the funny thing is, two Jamaicans are running faster than his PB already, right? And he just had a, another guy equal his PB, a 982, in Oblique Seville, you know, who will, who will be getting ready. And the funny thing is, these three guys are all coached by great coaches. But the way Key Shane ran that 977, bro, <laughs> listen, and what he said his coach told him to do, it's scary because once he gets past 60 meters, he's, once he clears Oblique Seville, he's looking at the clock. He's looking directly at the clock with 40 meters to go. And maybe five meters before they come through the line, he shuts it down. That right there is scary. Now, if he did it at 9, 8, 9, 9, I'd be like, okay. But he did that at 9, 7, 7. Just remember, 976 put you in the top 10 all the time. This dude just did that. 
clearing the feet, just clearing obliques. As coach told him, hey, run the first 60 and just, you know, finish. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when I saw that, he made me uncomfortable, dog. I was like, Whew. Hold on now, you slow down with a 977, dog? It's about to get crazy out here, seriously. And I think for me, the telltale sign was what is that they're not peaking and running like past whatever their their um, preparation threshold is or their peak threshold is. They did superior times in the semis as well. I had to look at my phone and be like, hold on, this is the finals? They was like, no, this is semis. They running 98 in the semis like that? That's crazy. But listen, you talking about peak performance. Hey, listen, that the timeline is going to be crazy because yeah, the timeline is definitely great for Noah, but it's better for them. This is on this is Key Shane's first race out, bro. Yeah. I, I don't remember him running this year. I I don't either. I actually was about to call you and be like, do you remember Key Shane running this year? He he did not know. So if this dude opening up in, in nine, nine, his first ride was what, nine nine? I can't even remember, but the second round was 9-8, so he had four more weeks to go. You know what I mean? Four more weeks to go. So what do you think the philosophy behind that was? Do you think that either he was uh, uh, injured or do you think that he uh, it was kind of orchestrated that way for him to not even run this year, to be hungry to go out and run and be in 9-7 shape? No, I think they plan to run this year. Um, I watched some of their vlogs, right? Um, he was injured. He had a little situation going on, but, you know, dealing with his coach, his coach told him he'd have him ready. Funny thing about those athletes over there at um, MVP, they trust in Coach Fano and his team. You know what I mean? Because he, he does have a, a whole team with them also. So he, he spareheads and, and he has a whole team of people. So shout out to them. That's one of your I mean? favorite coaches over there too, man. It is. It is, man. It is. I, <laughs> It is, man. He, he's a great coach, man. Great coach. Did you think, see the uh, the video of Keyshane when um, he crossed the line, finished his victory, and he literally, like, with spikes on and everything, he walked all the way from the competition track, across concrete, across parking lot, all the way back to the warm area just to go shake Coach Frano's hand? Yeah, that's that belief, that, man. That's when your that, coach tell you, hey, man, you ready? You're going to do this? And you go out there and you do it and you be like, hey, look, man, listen, I just want to appreciate you. I thank you for everything you've done. You were right. I ain't going to never question you in life. Oh, yes, I was. <laughs> that, that was a handshake of I'm sold. Yeah, listen. <laughs> I bro, am sold. Listen, you got me. You told me. And his mom is so proud of him, man. Because that's the second person he go to after. And well, she come to him and he hug her and he hold her, man. That was so great to see, man. This is going to be this guy's Olympic team. Did you know he was only 22? That's a I big boy. I did not know he was twenty two, boy. He he is a monster. There's always they always say like you always, they you hear and people say that he is the Asafa two point but I think Keyshan is his own person though. Yeah, they, have, they don't have the same running style. First of all, Asafa has God mode running style. He is yes, he does. And I'm not saying he that Keyshan doesn't have good form, but they, their form is definitely not alike. For one, and then two, I think Keyshan just has a different. He has a diff whole different swag about him, man. He, he changes his person, man. He does. I don't think I, I I don't I don't like in the sport when they compare the people because they make those people the markers. You know, he is his own guy. You know what I mean? I don't think no one other than than Bolton there, like second race out, just ran like nine seven. Or no, in their first race, nine seven. So I think those comparisons, I mean. These guys are creating their own lane into, into their greatness. So I just think, boy, this, this 100 for them is going to be very good. It, it looks like the emergence of the Jamaican male team is starting to get back to where it used to be when it was Boat Blake, you know what I mean? Ash Mead, uh, um, Steve Mullins, Nesta Carter. Mike Frater, like, you know, you know, with this happening with him and Oblique, you know, they're going to have another wave of kids that's going to go and do the same thing. They're going to have probably about four or five guys running out. So Listen, I, I'm man, they, very happy for them. They have activated rival camp mode again. You know it. So <laughs> you know it. Mills versus Frano. It <laughs> is, it is activated. On. It is back on. Yeah, I try to tell you. 
the Bet next generation agree. is in full effect. <laughs> full. We, we, we could honestly say, I guess, I mean, they worried about it for a while, but it looked like Jamaican sprinting is going to be okay in the, in the near future. Jamaica. Oh, yeah. Oh, a, a hundred. Ma- spe- ma- definitely ma- in a hundred meters. Yeah, definitely in a hundred ma- meters, for sure. Yeah. Now the two hundred is is we we not we not they they're not like and when I looked at it when you when we talked about uh, Dennis's sweep having three people from the same camp, um, Glenn Mills did that with Usain Bolt, Blake, and Warren Weir. They swept the trials and then they swept the Olympics. So it's the second time in history one man from one camp has swept this national trials and. He he winds up Dennis because he swept the Olympics. So if, if Dennis could get this to happen for his women to sweep the hundred meters and gold, silver, and bronze for his camp, he would be. Yeah, he would be. The He'd same be on that level. Wales. He'd be on that level. We need to have a coach's hall of fame, man, like a a, a jacket, man, because some of these dudes like Brooks Johnson and all these guys, they should have been in the hall of fame or. Some, or some type of ceremony because the stuff that we talk about is just so hard. Like people I mean, don't understand how hard that is to do. To get one is hard enough, but to get three? I think that we should have a uh, RSG uh, Coaches Hall of Fame, man. Yeah, man. We yeah. want to have a jacket and everything. We got to, man. Got to have Got to get their sizes and everything. Trying to tell you, man, man. Listen. Or, or, either, get, or either get a hat for them or something like that. Yeah, these coaches like Glenn Mills, you know, Dennis Mitchell, Bobby Kersey, you know, all these great names. And, and it's, it's a lot more. Um, I'm, I'm going to miss a lot, but it's a lot more who will, deserve, who will be that deserving. But a lot of you kids need to go and look up these coaches. The athletes are great, but some of these coaches are great architects, man. They're great engineers because they know how to engineer the body to get it right for the right time. So... You know, these coaches are great in their own right. Yeah, the athletes get it done, but some of these coaches, they know exactly what they need to do to get these athletes together. So it goes to them. Very much true. Very much um, so. Women's yeah. 200. Women's 200, man. Yeah, what's um? Sharika walked away with the win. Sharika got, Sharika got the double-double. Yeah, double-double, 22-2. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, she going... She she it, it looked pretty easy for her. It didn't look super hard, you know what I mean? Um, but we all know she's gonna be ready for the Olympics. We all know her wheelhouse is just so deep in 21-4. And like I said, because the Olympic champion won't go back to defend, she's leaving her countrywoman in charge to be like, hey, y'all bring that back for me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, y'all, y'all gotta bring it back. Y'all gotta bring it back. <laughs> so you know what the crazy thing is? I'm looking at it is is do definitely a changing of the guards going on right now because I'm looking at these spots. Let's say the women's 200 meters, right? With Miss Jackson winning first, um, and you look at second place, 20 age 23. You look at third place, age 22. You look at fourth place, age 20. These are young, young athletes who are just about to come into their own. They're not even close to coming into their own, to be honest, man. Like, you're going to watch the next couple of years, these young athletes really kind of start to emerge and show who they are for their country, man. This is, this is a special time, man. This is a very special time for uh, Team Jamaica, but also a lot of the countries around the world. I think it's a generational thing that's happening. You're watching it happen right now. No, nah, no. Nah, I, I say track is definitely in good hands all over the world, man. Because you're seeing more countries represented. You know what I mean? You're seeing a lot of countries uh, starting to stand up and be represented from all over the world. Uh, uh, like like the girl from Ireland, Rashid. Uh, Rashida. 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 Yeah, yeah. man. She, she's there. She's, there. she's on their country's all-time list is the... National record holder in the 100, 200, and the 400. And listen, they ain't no slouch <laughs> times, man. She, she at their Olympic trial, she went 11-13, backed it up with a 22-34, and then came through in the 400 with a 49-07. She did work. 
She did work. It, it amazes me when I watch athletes who are at elite level and they are operating. And I mean, not time-wise, but they're operating like as if you are still in high school or summer, you know, summer track, meaning like multiple events. Like we come from an era ride where you pick an event and that's your event. <laughs> Right. If you if you good at another one, we all right, we'll jump in a couple of times. You may run a couple of two hundreds, but you have athletes now that can jump and run the hundred competitively, win the two hundred competitively, and the four hundred. Like it is amazing times, man. Shouts out to Rashida, man. She is definitely a history maker for her country. Yeah, shout out to her, and she'll cause she'll she'll be the the cause of why you will have more from that country do well because they'll be like, oh, she can do it. I can do it too. So, you know, she'll be a huge inspiration. You know what I mean? I love watching their camaraderie at, at uh, World Relays this year, man. I was oh, yeah. interested to see exactly how the rest of their team, you know, because sometimes it's like a, a club in a way. You know what I mean? Like you race with a certain amount of people or you see a certain amount of people on your team and you become comfortable with them and that you become a loyalist, right? And her coming into the fold, um, I wanted to see how exactly how her countrymen were going to treat her. They rallied around her because they knew that in the day, it gives them an opportunity to be even better. That's, that's inspiration. Not just the women, but the men too, especially with the mixed relays. Like they were there, boy. They were on point. They did their job. Um, one of the guys on that team, um, he actually inspired me, man. He had the gray, full gray hair on the top of his head. I was like, you know oh, what? Oh yeah, I saw that. But he ain't, he ain't, he ain't old though. He just got gray. Okay. <laughs> right. oh. Hold on, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> we old, bro. Especially me. People always think I'm, I'm older than you, but I'm. You younger. are older than me. You older I'm, than me. I'm definitely not. <laughs> you older than me, man. I, I t I, you know what? I'm gonna need you to put your driver's license up next time we on the show. <laughs> Until then, you older than me. Every one episode, he older than me. He's 65, dog. <laughs> I am not. You can check it out. <laughs> Shoot. We, um, you're right. It's definitely the change in the guard. Speaking of that, the men's 200, man, Brian Lavelle. Boy ran 1997. That boy is 21. 21, man. 21, 21. years old. You know what I mean? Um, and then you had Andrew Hudson. Uh, World Athletics final finalist from the 200 meter last year. That's crazy, man. Place. I remember when Andrew came along and he was like the rookie dog. You know what I mean? Yep. I remember when he came along and he was the young buck. He was a rookie. Now he the vet, dog. He the vet yep. now. <laughs> yep. yep. Now, but this is calling out all those, those names from the 100 and the 200. Um, this 4 by one for Jamaica is going to be interesting. I need you to tell me in who your the, mind. On Jamaica, who won this four by one? Who won the four by one and how would you set it up? Men and women. And go. Ah. But Jamaica. Definitely. Well, I'm putting Keyshane number two. I need, I need somebody. The reason why I'm gonna put Keyshane in number two, because the US gonna have a strong team. If they have Kenny back there. If they have Kenny back there, I, I, I'm going to need somebody back there who could, who could either get away from Kenny or I ain't going to say roll Kenny because ain't too much people going to roll that. But I'm going to need Keyshane over there. Keyshane going to be out there. Shoot, I might go oblique Seville out the hole to Keyshane. <laughs> Then I'm going to go to Matthew Hood on this turn. He runs a good turn. So, um, Blake. I'm going to let Blake finish that one. Which Blake? Which Blake are we talking about? Not, Johan didn't make the team. Um, no disrespect to Johan. The other Blake. Okay. All right. Got you. Okay. Okay. All right. Just making sure. Inquiry minds want to know. <laughs> nah. Nah, nah. Yeah, I, 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 I'd go with that one, man. I'd go with that one. 
I, that's, that is actually good because in my mind, I was like, oh, Oblique has to be, he has yeah. to pop it off. That's a great combination to get them out front uh, or, or work to get out front. Um, that combination from Oblique to Keyshane, Matthew Hood, Blake bringing home. Yeah, let Akeem do it. Yeah. Let Akeem do it. Let, the key, Akeem is tested and tried, man. You know, he he's ran a couple of denies this year, but, you know, I'd put him there because I just like how his last season went, man. You know what I mean? Didn't go how you wanted it to go, but I watched him hold his own against a, a Coleman and what he does. So I feel like when these lights turn on, oh, he going to show up. So we going to... We going to lay the fire like that, bro. We going Oblique Seville, Keyshane, to, 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 um. Matthew Hud. Matthew Hudson to Keen Blake. And I think that's a, a very tough team to beat. Well, first of all, it's, hopefully they'll be able to get the synergy together because Keyshane is 22, Oblique is 23, Akeem is 22. So they got a lot of years together to put this uh, potential trio slash quartet together and make something consistently happen successfully for Team Jamaica. This is um, this is gonna be something special, man. I think they can really get a a really good synergy going with that that order. I, I, I say the same thing. So I know if you was gonna ask me, I was gonna say the same order. Yeah, that's that's the order I go with. Only because man, oblique popped them blocks, boy. He pop them blocks and he be gone. He be gone. <laughs> he do be on, bro. He be gone. He be yeah. gone. Catch me if you can, boy. <laughs> right. that, hey, that'll be a great lead off watching. Let's just say if Coleman jumps into the relay pool and, and they put him on first leg. Coleman out the hole, oblique out the hole, dog. That's a good, that's a good head to head right there. That is. That is a good head to head right there. That is. And the funny thing is, both of them ran 9 8 this year already. Mm -hmm. Coleman ran 86, and Seville ran 982. That would be a good matchup. But that second leg going to be explosive, 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 boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you know me. I love a good backstretch now, dog. That's my spot right there. That's my spot. I'm going to grab a popcorn for that one, boy. If Keyshane and Kenny down the backstretch, Kung Fu Kenny down the pool, they're going to be Wait. riding. You hear me? Third leg. Don't leave early. <laughs> boy. <laughs> Do not leave early. Oh, hey, man. who, all right, so, all right, we go with that for the men's um, Jamaican 4 by one um, Should we wait and do a counterpart, meaning like uh, what Team USA will bring to the table, or do you want to nah, do it nah, right now? Cool, we could do it right now because we already talked about the 100 and the 200. All right, cool, let's no, do it. We didn't talk about the 200, but we talked about the 100 already. But, so let's do it. So... You got your top three. You either put, this is what I go with. I'm going to tell you how I go right now. I'm going to go Coleman out the hole to Fred. All right. All right. What? Yeah, I'm going Fred. Coleman to Fred. Coleman to Fred. Kenny just damn near ran almost 10-1 on that curve. Kenny, he going to fly to Noah. That's what I'm going with. Wow. See, I would always thought, because you always picked this person and said he needs to be on the relay. This is true. I thought you were going to pick Arian Knighton for that third leg. Yeah, Arian ain't had enough. He ain't, he ain't. He ain't had enough races. Enough races? The boy just ran 1977. This is true, but Kenny ran 195. <laughs> That's <funny>. <laughs> He did. Ken Kenny ran 195 and 98. You right. I get it. I'm, I'm sorry. You good. You, you right. You gonna, have you banged anybody? I mean, but the funny thing is, is like, this would, this would be Kenny's first year on there. I'm not slighting the kid. I'm not saying, and I do fight for him. But, I like what Fred did and the 100. I like what Fred did. I owe him an apology, but he earned his right on there. You know what I mean? And he was, you forget, he was on the last world championship gold medalist team. So, where they, where, I'm going to always go with experience over that. Now, if the kid ran all year and he was on that first world leading 
Uh, four by one with um, Grant Holloway. Those, shoot, I would have, I would have. He just didn't have enough races this year, and other people stepped up and proved themselves a little more than he did. That's all I it think, is. I think you're making it tough for uh, for Coach Mike Marsh because that's a good, that's a really good combination for sure. Definitely. I'm trying to tell you, that's what you go with. If you want to go with anything, you go with the experience. All those guys are experienced in the four by one. They've been running for years. I'm gonna go with the experience. Um, you could chance it in the in the in the heats and let Arian go there. I would say that. But that final quartet, that's what that need based on if all of them are healthy, that's what I'm going with. I'm no expert. These, these are just opinions, people. I'm no, these are just opinions, because I know you know how people like you know, those <laughs> keyboard warriors. <laughs> <laughs> But that's All what right. I go. I, I think that's a definitely a good run for Jamaica and the USA. That's that's gonna be a fiery race between those two teams. All right, cool. Well, you know what? No, it's not sliding nobody. I'm gonna go with the word of Coleman out the hole to Kenny on the backstretch. I like what Kenny brought to World Relays. He actually thoroughly impressed me at World Relays on that backstretch. I knew that something was up, meaning like he was going to run fast this year, watching him accelerate on that backstretch. And I think he's that kind of person and he needs to find a space where he's comfortable. I think he found second leg what made him comfortable. I think to, to uproot him, to make him start running third leg would be, um, a, I don't want to say a challenge, but you watched him over the years. And he showed a lot of promise in his individual races, but now he's coming into his own, expediting the relay. Let him earn his spot. Let him know what his spot is. That's what I did for mine. My thing was, I'm second leg. This is who I am. This is where I'm going to be. You know what I mean? So you know where to find me at. I think Kenny can show that second leg because he has such great top end speed and he holds it very well. I think it needs to be utilized properly. And I think that will be on that. Um, Backstretch. I want to see Arian Knight on what he can do in a four by one. I mean, I think we need to put Arian Knight Knight on that four by one, on that third leg, and see what he can do. I think he's ready. I think he's hungry. I think everything he's went through this season, um, looking in his eyes, has matured him. Right. I think he was waiting to see exactly how he was going to be received by the public. Um. And no one, everyone showed him love. Everyone showed him love. He went out there. He ran comfortably, um, especially for his first race this whole outdoor season. He dropped 19, after two races, competitively, he dropped 1977 within a, what, two, three-day span. So I think that he's going to be ready next four weeks, get himself ready, get sharp. I don't see why he can't do it. And then obviously bring it home, you beat Noah Lyles. I think... That between, if you're going to have an alternate, I think the alternate be, needs to be, be between Noah and Fred. I think Fred, I think Fred can do a great job of bringing it home. Fred has ran relays and usually is anchored on the relays when he has ran relays. So put him back to where he's comfortable at. Yeah, but we, we both know. If Noah's healthy, that's where he's at. And Noah has this saying that he always says, I've never lost being on last leg. You right. He said, he said, "I has never lost being on last leg." He he has not, and I have been his I have been his teammate in this situation where in 2019 he got the chance to be la anchor leg, and he blew it out the water, man. So from then on, he was my anchor leg. Anytime I was on a team, I was like, "That's my anchor leg right there." You know what I mean? And I'll, think about it. From if you are a relay coach, and this is me, kind of subconsciously throwing my hat in the ring if I ever choose to be a relay coach in this situation. Scenario-wise, Fred has only run the 100, right? Once the 100 is done, he's going to rest. He can get ready for the prelims for the 4 by one Noah's going to get ready for the 200. Arian Knighton's only running the 200. So I think that'll be great for Fred to come in, do what he needs to do for the prelims. Then Noah comes in for the finals. Man, Fred ain't running no prelims and not running no finals. You crazy? 
Man, he already at odds with them people, man. You think he gonna let them do that? <laughs> boy, you crazy, boy. You think that man gonna run the prelims and be like, oh, especially if he medal and not run the finals? Boy, you sound crazy. I do. I, sound, <laughs> I do. I, I, sound, I sound real crazy right now. Boy, you sound crazy. I'm trying but, to But tell see, you. What, I'm, what I'm saying is, no, what I'm saying is, to be honest, bro, that is the predicament that you have when it comes to Team USA. You have so much talent. Where do you put it all? All right, let me ask you Where this. Where do you put all your talent at, bro? Let me ask you this. Christian Miller made it. We, do we run him in the prelims? Do you run what? him in the prelims? He made the he made He's in the relay pool. No, I, don't, I, I wouldn't put Christian Miller in the, in the relay pool. I mean, he could be in the relay pool. I wouldn't run him at the Olympics. You wouldn't? No. I would. I I, I'll put the stick in his hand first. That's the easiest job. Just get it away. Let him be. Let him be pop off leg. He gets out well. But see, and I'm not. I'm not knocking Christian Miller at all. Not at all. Our issue in America is we give everyone chances. So then now our team is inconsistent. That's exactly why we always have lost to Jamaica, because we plug and play too much. Wait now, that ain't why y'all always lost to Jamaica. All right. That, that, that leg speed is fine now. Don't act, like, don't, act like, don't act like three of the fastest men in the world wasn't on them four by ones or two, two out of three every time was on them teams. All right. I got it. Listen, I got it. I'm just saying. I got it. But other relays have shown that you don't need to be the fastest people out the world to get the job done. Why can't this, Team USA do this? this is, no, <laughs> team, U, team USA have already done it. They've done it twice. They've redeemed themselves at Worlds and they have to try to redeem themselves at the Olympics. And that's all it is. But you're right. Jamaica had... <laughs> <laughs> Jamaica had two out of... Two to three of the fastest people in the on world. A, on every... On, on each of them relays. On either each of them were, relays. Either it was Bolton Blake or it was Bolton Asafa. But you never... You know what's funny? I don't think we ever seen Bolt, Blake, and Asafa on a 4 by one I don't think so either. This is that's great. Chat. Chat, you'll be wrong, let us know. Put the date out there. In a world championship or Olympics, I don't think we have. I think the year that the year that Asafa ended it, it was it was Nikhil Ashmi gave it to Asafa. You right. I think Bolt ran second leg, Nesta ran first. And then the world record. Race no, was, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Which one was it? Bolt ran second. Bolt ran second leg. What was yeah. I at? When did this happen? No, Bolt ran third leg. That's what I'm saying. Bolt yeah. ran third leg to third give leg it to Asafa. To mm -hmm. And who ran who ran second leg? Um, I think it was um Bailey Cole. Was it Bailey Cole on the on the back stretch? I don't even know. They only have usually two people on the back stretch. It's either Michael Fred or Bailey Cole. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I, those three, in which they were number one, number two, and number four all time, or number one, number three, and number four all time, of not being on the team. That's crazy. Top top three, fa top five, three out of five fastest men in the world is Jamaican. <laughs> it's crazy. From a small little country, bro. That's crazy. Look, every season, a little part of me look at my teammates in American black. All right, man, y'all got to get ready. <laughs> Trayvon, try, Trayvon, I need you a nine seven shape. Tyson, where you? Tyson, where you at? You gotta drop something hot, dog. Let's go. <laughs> right? Because I be thinking in my mind because we, we never had the opportunity really to blend. You know what I'm saying? Like our our errors together. I was I was the piece that was that connected errors. Right? So Trayvon and Coleman. Um, I was that Tyson and Bailey era. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I would love to see, you know, a healthy Tyson with a Coleman on, on the front side or, or a Trayvon on the front side with a Noah anchoring. Yeah. That would be nah, nasty, though. Nah, I hear you. I hear you. Shoot, boy, we got off topic for a little bit with them. Uh, but shoot, one more off topic. Do you run Quincy in the mixed relay? Do you put him on the team? Yes. So how you put him on, how you let him run and don't run Christian Miller run in, in the prelims? Because they don't got a mix four by one. 
Not yet, at least. They working on it. They working on the mix four by one. <laughs> wow. So man. no, what you talking no. about, bro? It's true though. I'm listen. They have a mix four by four, and they got a regular four by four, right? I think Quincy would be great on a mix four by four. It gives him it gives him some experience, you know what I'm saying? And then he can move his way up from a mix four by four, which he legitimately still can win a gold medal and still become an Olympian. And then um he can move his way up as he becomes more seasoned into a into a men's four by four. I, once they do listen, once they do the mix four by one, which I hope they hurry up and do it, then you have an opportunity to have a, a larger you know what I'm saying? The relay pool we have now, you have more selection now. Now you can be able to use two or three more guys for the four by one. Mix four by one at least. Yeah. I hear you. We're going to go back, man. Go back to Jamaica, man. Your collegiate NCAA record holder, um, All-American, Nikisha Price won the 400. 50.01. She ran 49 in the semis, though. But I want to see if she uh, she stay. How long she could hold on to that because she's gonna, she definitely is gonna need everything for that four hundred, going against Polino, you know what I mean, and other mm-hmm. four hundred meter um runners, uh Rashida from Ireland, um four hundred is definitely gonna be one to watch, um, so she's definitely prepared, but she's had a very very Long season. Um, her and Stacey Ann Williams. Uh, this is going to be crazy, man. That four by four. Nah. I Listen, that, 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 four, that four by four in America is still rocking, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that US 400, boy, they still rocking, boy. Listen, girls, that, boy, you're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> even, on, even on the Jamaican side, that third place, Broomfield. Boy, she ran the race of her life. She PR with that uh, 51 for, uh, 24 to beat out Stephanie Ann McPherson. Stephanie Ann McPherson is a, a veteran, too. She knows how to be able to run those rounds. So, yeah, Broomfield definitely had to run the race of her life. She on that team now. She on she, the team individually. She, she on, No. No, no, no. Hmm? What? No. She, what did I she say? Did qualifying time is 50.9. Oh. She has I time, I keep forgetting though. that. Yeah, she has time. She, she has time. time. But it could be by world ranking, too. So hopefully if she ran enough races and her world ranking is up high enough, she'll get that, that individual spot. But if not, she would have to run the qualifying time of 50.9. I got you. I got you. Yeah. That'd so, always be getting me, dog. I'd be like, oh, you made it, dog. And then nah. I'd be like, oh, man. I think that's the worst way to try to make it, knowing you got third, but you still got to try to make it time. But that's, that's great development. Um, um, by Lance Brahman. I think that's Lance Brahman's athlete. No, I know that's Lance Brahman's athlete. I don't think I know that. But, <laughs> but that's great development. He's developed that young lady down to um, 51-24. Kudos to them. Definitely, um, 100%. I feel, like, I feel like that standard and you are still allowing people to go out and run, it's like, it's like a math test. It's like you know the answer, but then the instructor wants you to do long form division on it. <laughs> like you gotta, you gotta write it out on the side. That's your Olympic standard right there to show you, you qualified for it. Yeah, they, they, they dropped them Olympic standards to those things were fast, boy. Listen, people going out there about to kill themselves to make these little standards. <laughs> but I mean, it's the ratio. It's the ratio of how many people are successfully running these times. You know what I mean? So. They got to be able to meet the standard. Yeah. Yeah. So a tough one for you, boy. Do you want to do the women's four by one? For Jamaica? For both. Women's four by one. I think we already did the women's four by one for USA, but I'll do it again. Um, Women's four, um, four by one for Jamaica. Mommy rock it out the hole? I definitely, I definitely going to do that. I don't want to put her late. I want her, I wanted to, I wanted to set the tone early. So you go mommy rocket out the hole to your young star, Tia Clayton. On the, on, on the back stretch? Yeah. They let, when that girl and drop 10-8, that means she could fly. Let her fly. Give her that, give her that back stretch. But you know what they probably will do? They probably will switch it. 
So they probably go Tia Clayton and let Shelly fly. They're going to put their two bangers on two and four. That's the, yeah. So I switch it. I'm going to go Tia Clayton out the hole to Shelly on a fly. Shelly going to be around 10, 8, 10, 7 round by the Olympic time. And she ain't doing the two, she ain't doing the double. Yeah, I'm going to roll on the back stretch. I don't want to run on the curve. So I'm going to go Tia Clayton, Tia Clayton to Shelly. That third spot is hard, dog. Do you put a 200-meter runner or do you put another 100-meter runner on there, though? That's so tough right now. I'm, go- I'm going to go. I'm gonna, To me, personally, I like how you started. I would go. I go. I would go with a hundred meter runner on that, on that turn. Uh, maybe a Lana Reed. Nah, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm doing. Cause this girl, I'm going Tia Clayton, Shelly Ann, Lene Thomas, to Sharika. I'm going to give me that 200 meter runner on that third leg. Give me her on the fly. She's going to hold it down. At 22.34, she's going to hold the ground. And then Sharika going to be real estate. She's going to be insurance. Now, to combat that, um, a lot of people going to say I'm crazy for setting up this female USA for this. But this girl, she carry Richardson, run an amazing turn, bro. If you go and look at all her 200s, boy, this girl damn near running an 11-1. Every time she rolled this curve, I'm going, she carry out the hole to T.T. Terry. <laughs> I'm going, she carry T.T. to Gabby to MJ. Melissa Jefferson. That's what I'm really? doing. Really? That, that's what I'm doing, bro. Nah. That's what I'm doing. I'm flipping, I'm flipping uh MJ and Shakari. Not doing that. No, nah, you come on, dog. First of all, not doing that. Two two people who bring insurance with them, all state. That is Noah allows and Shakari Richardson. They do. They have they have superior top end speed. If you would strike a distance, you getting caught. Listen, that's the, re- it. the reason why I say that. And look, she just proved herself, right? We watched what she did, what Melissa Jefferson did in the Bahamas. She anchored that leg flawlessly. You know what I mean? I watched her in Gainesville. She anchored that leg flawlessly, right? I've watched her on the start, but I'm telling you, the analytics show that this girl, she Carrie Richardson, dominates the turn. She dominates the turn. Not by a little bit, bro, by a lot. <laughs> With the best in the with the best in the field. I'm talking, she's she's done it. Go back and watch Worlds. She's done it with Sharika them in the race, bro. She don't get rolled up until later on in the race. That's true. I'm telling you. you but this that, isn't but this isn't an individual race, though, man. You're this right. Is, but when you match her and TT, man, that's like the Wonder Fem twins power activate. <laughs> remember that cartoon? I don't know if you remember I did. that cartoon. I remember, I remember that cartoon. <laughs> Listen, they going to touch? And Jamaica going to have a problem, boy. They going to have a problem. Because once they give it to Gabby, Gabby going to do what Gabby do. And MJ going to hold on, bro. You just Look how she's been finishing. All her, all her, her last 40 meters has been looking flawless this year. I know, but, but MJ has a way better start than she carry. I don't care what that stuff. I'm telling. I'm showing you from the analytics, but numbers don't lie. I, I get it. Like numbers I said, I rather I rather put my my person who has superior top end speed. I rather put them on the back end because if yeah. things get if things get a little sketchy and a little spicy, I know that they're gonna pull it through. Though. What you mean, MJ could hold on to that? What you talking about? MJ could do that. MJ could do that. You gonna put that pepper on them early? You gonna you gonna make MJ feel like she's so hot there? They gonna just be running for second. But I get it. Everybody gonna want to see Shakari run last. You know, I get it. That's gonna be 
You know what I mean? She gonna have the Carmen the, Lita Jetta effect. The come you know across I mean? the line, yeah, gotta, and, gotta be the photo and the- Yeah, and the shout and the- And the shout, I, yeah. I get it. I, I Like I said, I know a lot of people be mad because I did it like that, but that's how I would do it. But you know what I mean? Who I'm, These are only opinions. I am nobody. I know this. <laughs> I, def, I definitely know this, but I definitely think and I've said it on our last show. The world, I feel like the world record is in jeopardy. It is. Okay. I, I feel so. I, you yeah. know what? I'm I'm not gonna deny you on that one. It's it's looking it's looking like it's coming into focus for sure. John tell you. Like it's coming into focus. All right, so we got the women's four by one out the way for both. Um you coming to America. Let's, Let's no 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 no. We We're not coming, coming to, to America? America. Not yet, man. Okay, chill cool. out, chill out, Eddie Murphy. Chill out. My man. bad, my bad. Chill out, man. Coming out. to America. You know what I'm, saying? You know, I'm I'm your Simeon dog. Like yeah. chill out. I got yeah, you. Yeah. Hold on, we ain't there yet because we still have the women's hundred meter hurdles in Jamaica. Oh and yes, we, and we and we yeah. got the men's and we got the men's one t- one ten hurdles in Jamaica. This is true. So go ahead, hit it. <laughs> Listen. What? And it was, I don't even know how I even forgot about those women's hurdles, bro. It was a hot one. 1228, world lead in Jamaica. Mm-mm. Hold on. Yeah, 1228. You're right. You're right. I'm about to say then what it was. You're right. You're right. You're right. I thought 25. My bad. It's 28. No, no, no. 1228. Now, I'm going to keep in mind, this, this world lead was short-lived. But it was a world lead for a couple of maybe 30 minutes to an hour by Kira Nugent, um, which is the national record for Jamaica. Hold on. This is not her PR, though? They didn't put up their PR, though. They just said season's best. No, no, no. That gotta, if, if it's a national record, it's a P. No, nobody's ran 12-2 in Jamaica ever. No, bro. We ain't even going to do that. I'm just looking, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, listen, man. Just looking. Was, just looking. Listen, the world champion is right behind her. Danielle Williams is right behind. Yep. <laughs> and then and then you had Janique Brown in 1261. But 1228, which is the national record, was a world lead at the time. You know what I mean? Listen, I know these hurdles, these hundred meter hurdles, bro, they putting the world record holder on Ertis. They putting the Olympic, the current Olympic champion. On notice, and shoot, all the former ones are on notice, man. This is, bro, this is, I don't know if this is the changing of the guards of the new wave of, of new hurdlers, because, you know, we hear a lot of the, a lot of the old names, but these are a lot of new names that we're hearing now running these super fast times. You know what I mean? How many times have we called, and I hope I'm saying your name right, sweetheart, Akira Nugent. I hope I'm saying that right. How many times have we called her name? We've called the Kennys. We've called the Jasmines. We've called the Tobys. We've talked. We've called the the um, the Nias. Yeah, we've called those, but I don't remember one time naming this young lady. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. You're right. I don't. Yeah. Um, I think on both sides. I mean, if you're gonna go from America, I mean, probably across the world once again. I think it's a change in the guards for a lot of the these female hurdlers, short hurdlers at least, for sure. Yeah. Um, twelve twenty eight, boy, that is that's moving. Smoking. That is moving. Smoking, boy. I got to go back and watch that. I got to go back and watch that tape again, dog. Because you know, the twelve twenty eight compared to the rest of the field, that's 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 nasty work right there. That's nasty yeah. work. Age 22. Crazy. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. That's what you call getting prepared for the right moment. Now, she has to do it again in a packed stadium, which Jamaica could emulate that, in a packed stadium for that medal, in which she'll meet in Paris with formidable competitors. It's not going to be easy. Not going to be easy. But it's, it's crazy. Moving on to the men. Men's 110 hurdles. Men's 110s. I'm glad to see that this young man is 
is Pac Healthy, uh, Rashid Brabell. You know what I mean? He is your national champion with 13-18. Orlando Bennett, second. And your current Olympic champion, Hansel Parchment, 13-19. It was a damn near blanket. Listen, cl- close race. Very. We got very. Broadbell with 13-18. You got Orlando with 13-18. And then you got Hansel coming in at 13-19. So I'm we talking about thousands are separating them. <laughs> but not not even though our former Olympic champion wasn't even that far behind with 22, Omar McLeod. Yep. He 13, just missed 22. out the team by one place. And you know what I mean? I, I don't think I think this is the best he's looked in some years. I think next year Omar is definitely going to be back looking like he used to be. You know what I mean? This has been a solid year for him, training with a new coach, and this is the best we've seen him in, I think, the last maybe three or four years. Yeah, I, I think just more races for him that will be able to gain his, like, more, um, and not saying he doesn't have it, but more race confidence back, um, be able to sharpen his strategy, his skills. Um, it, and that's all it needs, especially in hurdles, man. You just need repetition. You know, you just can't show up and just think that you just can go out there and get it done. Um, hope he stays healthy. Hope he stays strong. I mean, watching him run when he was at the top of his, uh, yeah, the top of the mountain, you know, it was special to definitely watch him. But you also got to watch out for Taylor Mason as well. The, Taylor Mason came through with thirteen twenty two as well. So you got from first place or the fourth place, which almost basically was a blanket finish. That's what you call fighting for the line. Yeah, fighting for the line. Yeah, you and you rarely see that in a a one ten hurdle race or a hundred meter hurdle race where everyone is. That close together. Yeah, that's that that definitely is crazy. So definitely we definitely crazy. can say that Team Jamaica on the hurdle side, men's hurdle side, are are coming. They're coming jam packed. No ditty. <laughs> but <laughs> listen. Are we done with Jamaica? I think we are done with Jamaica, Doug. So let's move right into those. Listen, the men's hurdles, right after we talked after those men's hurdles, and then we'll talk about the women's hurdles. Bro, just at the U.S. trials, I think this was the fastest first, second, and third finish at U.S. trials in history. Yeah, it was the fastest uh, 110 hurdle race in American history. In American history, you had 1286 by Grant Holloway, and then Freddie Kirk. He uh, came through with 1293. Shouts out to Freddie. And uh, Daniel came through with 1296. So, so you every, said- everyone, I mean, well, not everyone. Freddie and Roberts had big PRs for them, for sure. Oh, Grant had a big PR. That's a, no, that's not a PR for him. That's not a PR for him, dog. Yeah, he, cha- he literally. It's a championship record for him. <laughs> it is a championship record for him. I think his PR actually is 1281. It is. I believe. Yes. It is. On the same track. On the same track. On the same track. On the same track. Grant, boy, wait, will you break this world record for us, please? Yeah, We've no. been waiting for you to break the world record for a while now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's just going to keep doing that indoor one, but it's time for this outdoor one to go. It's time, time for this outdoor, outdoor one. We need a 12. We need to see a 12 7, what a 12 7 looks like, dog. Please. I, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to tell you. But what's crazy is Cordell Tinch was fourth with 13 0. 13 0 didn't make the team, bro. 13 0. 13 0 didn't make the did team. not make the team. You understand? 13 0 did not make the team. That is crazy, man. 13 0 would have probably medaled in the last two Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's right. Uh, statistically, let me see that real quick. That is crazy. That is crazy. That is, that's crazy work right there, Doug. 13 0. Cordell Tinch. He would have been, he would have won gold in Rio, and he would have won gold in Tokyo. (laughs) 
He would have won gold in Rio and would have won gold in Tokyo at his time. That is now kept him off the team. Crazy. That's crazy. Ooh, that, no. means, that means that you just got it, man. First of all, tension's come a long way. A very long way. Just in what, two years, bro? Two years? Yeah, man, I think. He wasn't even, he wasn't even in Division I college. He wasn't even in Division I college track team, bro. You're right. You're right. And, and he was a dog coming out. And I think, I, I don't know exactly what happened. I could only speculate. You know what I mean? No disrespect to Cordell, but I just think that, you know, when you come out and you make that deal and you sign those contracts, you know, when you run up without a contract and you're doing well, you have nothing to lose. But now you have all these, like, I don't think a lot of people understand. We're going to give you a little insight. Our fans, a little insight of what goes on to, yeah, a lot of these tears that these athletes cry, they're from not making the team. But, and a lot of these people's contract, there are clauses that if they don't make the team, they face a heavy reduction. And a reduction could be anywhere from 20, 30, 40, 50% and what you're already made, being made. So to make it easier for you people at home, if you're making 100K and your shoe company say, if you don't make the team, you face a reduction of 40%, it's a lifestyle change because you go from making $100,000 a year base salary to $60,000. And that hurts. <laughs> yeah. Can you expound on that a little bit, Justin? How, did you feel any of that? Of, if you don't make the team... I mean, I mean, I've never personally been to that situation. <laughs> I, I damn sure made sure I never had that happen to me, Doug. So <laughs> when I didn't make the team for Tokyo, I was like, "Well, I retire." <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna reduce me. I'm gonna take the rest of this me, money, baby. I'm I'm out of here, man. Push away from the table. <laughs> but I, you know what? <laughs> Got to know when to hold, know when to fold them, baby. I'm out of here. No, but um. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's always in the back of your mind. The fact that um, not only can you lose, but if you falter, you can also be reduced. It's, it can really impact your income, you know, and your, and your way of living. So it's really hard for a lot of these athletes. A lot of these athletes go out there and you see them. When you come back to the call room after you, after you finish running, you see them. Some of them are sitting there like zombies because they just can't compute in their mind and in their heart like what just happened for one and then two what are the ramifications that come with it so they just sit there like and I mean and I mean like the whole field has picked up their stuff and gone you may see one or two athletes just still sitting there in disbelief you know or they don't know where to go what to do next so when you see a lot of these athletes out there don't just make fun of them because trust me when they get back into that into that warm barrier it's it's heavy for them. It's definitely heavy for them. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's definitely, that's a, that's a tough thing to deal with. You know what I mean? Um, definitely, definitely tough. Some of these people, uh, I won't say names, I know take care of people outside of themselves. And that reduction, um, I, when I understand it's definitely a business, that reduction definitely affects them and how they have to go about um, taking care of their family. So, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I'm just letting people know that look on your, their faces is a whole lot more than not going to the Olympics. It's just, it's just a whole lot more. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but moving on to those women turtles, man. The reason why we say it was short-lived, because that young lady, Masai, 12, 25. Smoking, boy. Smoking. Shout out, shout out to Masai, man. And Alasia, 1231, third place, 1231, blanket, that. that Coming to a, the left. <laughs> that was a very exciting race to watch, dog. I'm not even going to lie. Like, that was I, an exciting race to watch. I rewind my TV like three or four times watching that thing because, listen, boy, they put it all on the line for that race, bro. And 
they did not disappoint in no way, form, or fashion. No way, form, or fashion. What was your What was your thought? Because that was a hard race. Like, what was your thought from the beginning to end? I loved every round. They dropped 12-3 every round, except for Masai, who dropped that 12-2 in the finals. You understand how difficult it is to run 12-3, just what a one-off? And you out here running it through the rounds? You know what I'm saying? Lay ran 1235 first round, 1235 second round, 1231 finals. That's that's amazing shape that you're in. That's next level. This is what you're showing. This is right here is what what you're talking about, the changing of the guards. Not because veteran athletes are getting old or they're segueing out. It's the fact that the new athletes are coming in and they are hitting times that we see rarely and they're making them normal bro you know what i mean and this, watching Masai come across that line in the semis and hit you with the boom this little this little work this is little work right here like i, I thought she was just gesturing but then when she did in the finals i was like Phew. it's ridiculous <laughs> bro great start third place 12 38 i'm gonna just go through it for you bro Marseille, 1225. Alicia, 1231. Grace, 1231. Nia Lee, the vet, 1237 didn't make the team, bro. Oh. Tane Marshall, 1238. Kenny Harson, 1239 didn't make the team, bro. You could go, you could go fourth to six and take that team too. You could go fourth to six and take that team too. Listen, the USA is a war zone, bro. I take it war- back, bro. I take it back. <laughs> USA I take it is back. a war zone, bro. 12-3 all the way to sixth place? Bro, there ain't no change in the guards. All these female still <laughs> shooters, dog. What? <laughs> all these female still shooters out there, dog. That is crazy. 12-3 to sixth place. You imagine saying, hey, yo. But um, what'd you run at trials? I ran twelve thirty nine. Dang, you must have won that. Them girls, what them, what the other girls you beat? Now I got sixth place. What the other girls run? That sound crazy. That is. That sounds ridiculous, dog. You ran twelve three and got six. The USA is a war zone, bro. It is war zone. Listen, that twelve twelve by Toby might be in jeopardy, boy. I ain't even gonna tell you. Nobody knows what that surface in Paris gonna feel like. We don't know, boy. It could be threaded. It could be like Beijing in 2008. A lot of world records might fall. I don't it know. Can, it can be like London in 2012. 2012. That, thing, that thing will fire us too, boy. That will <laughs> fire us. <laughs> All yeah. I know is, bro, like, um, what did you think of, because, uh, you know, in the women's hurdles through the rounds, almost every heat qualified to the next round. Because there wasn't oh, yeah. enough female hurdlers out there, right, who qualified for the standard. Um, what did you think about when Nia, when the gun went off and Nia just kind of just, I guess, technically jogged her heat? It's a veteran move, man. It's a veteran move, you know. Um, who knows if she was feeling any type of nicks and acts? I'm going to save my legs. Well, what am I going to do that for? I know what me and my coach have been working on. You know what I mean? Like I said, like, 1237 didn't make the team, bro. 1237 would have made every other Olympic team in history. Oh, yeah, 100%. We ain't got to look back for that one. Yeah, Sorry, th- chat. Th- <laughs> 12, 1237 didn't make the team. Did she know? Did she think that 1237 wouldn't be enough? No. If you ask anybody before this thing and told you, hey, 1237 not going to make the team, they would say, boy, you crazy. Who, gonna, boy, you- who else going to run faster than that? Boy, you crazy. Get out of my face. Exactly, bro. Stop being disrespectful. 1237 didn't make the team. Yeah. And that's a good time. That's not a good time for her. That's a good time, period. I keep telling y'all, look, the most aggressive, volatile event in track and field is the women's short hurdles. They are animals out there, dog. They get to it. You understand? They get to it. Now, listen, this, these hurdles going to look crazy overseas because now you got, you got the young lady, 1228 from Jamaica, 
We got Serena from from France at twelve thirty one. Then you got Masai at twenty five. Then you got Grace Stark at thirty one and Alicia at thirty one. So now you got five people under twelve thirty five, bro. Five. But you still, we still ain't talked about Toby. Still ain't talked about Jasmine. Still ain't talked about a few other ladies who could still be in the race to win that gold medal. Absolutely. So that, listen, what these females are doing with these 100-meter hurdles is definitely going to be fire at the Olympics. You know what I mean? So that's definitely a a race I'm going to be waiting to watch. Like, I want to see what happens. I want to see. I definitely want to see what happens. I mean, you trying to see that in person? Because we in there. Yeah. We ninjas, in Paris, baby. Ninjas in Paris. Choo-choo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, man. Female 200. What's your thoughts? Um, Gabby made great decisions. You know, as the season went on, she wanted to go out there and do the one, the two, the four. Then she kind of just whittled away the one. She focused on the two and the four. And then she said, "Uh uh-uh, we ain't going to do that either. We're just going to stick with the two. We're going to specialize in that. Great. It was a great choice. I mean, she she dominated. You know what I mean? She dominated. And she did what she had to do. She went out there and ran a great race. I'm happy for Mackenzie Long. I'm definitely happy. I'm so happy for Mackenzie Long. I'm, de- I'm definitely, definitely happy. Listen, her getting caught sleeping in the blocks on that hundred, when you watched her come across the line, you know, that was a lesson for her. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it put that battery in her back. You know what I mean? She ran up in those stands, talked to her mom again, and she made that decision. There's no way I'm le- left off this team. Got another shot, and we gonna make it count. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm definitely proud of her, but I am definitely proud of that young lady, Brittany Brown, bro. Listen, that girl right there is a fighter to the end. It may not look how you wanted to look, but that girl is fast. She is fast, and I always like what she posts, man. She always posts great posts. Now I don't know if you've seen her post after the race. She was like. Wasn't an NCAA champion, wasn't a state champion, <laughs> always was a hard worker, and she's an Olympian, bro. Like, I it just it just shows that everybody path to the Olympics could look very different. You don't have Absolutely. to be that girl. I mean, Jet showed us that too, though. Yeah, Jet showed us that in two ways. That oh, you didn't. It didn't matter how old you was because she fought for a dream even in her later ages. And she just was a late bloomer. She wasn't an NCAA winner or anything like that. So Jet, Jet taught us that first. Absolutely. I'm proud of, I'm proud of Brown. She, you know, we talked about earlier on the show, maybe a couple episodes back, where she complained about her getting lane eight. You know what I mean? And she was like, how dare you put me in lane eight? I'm better than that. Yeah, you definitely are. You are Olympian now and you did that. And you did that from lane eight or nine. I think she did it from nine. <laughs> so, yeah. So even though she don't like it, that outside lane might be doing something for her, to listen, be honest. Listen, I just, I just like how she be like, look, I'm going to get it out of every day fitting. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them. So all of those ladies bought themselves another four weeks because they definitely going to meet up with a formidable opponent and, and Sharika Jackson. So good luck. <laughs> Good Absolutely. luck. Absolutely. What'd you, what'd you think about the men's 200? It played out the way I thought it was going to play out of my head again, too. <laughs> uh, I, I think that um, in my mind, I needed Kenny to beat Noah in the, in the 100. I think that from a strategy standpoint, that showed me where Kenny's raw foot speed could be at, right? Um, because now once you jump into a 200-meter race um, with somebody who's pretty much equal to your foot speed, it's going to come down to who can hold the la- the longest. 
and watching Kenny surge to the front in that 200, he wanted it. You could see it in his eyes. You could see it before the start. You could see when he came off the turn. He did everything he was supposed to hit. He hit that 2-2 two -two, like Dennis loves, and he kept on moving. It's just that Noah, dog. That Noah just dug deep, found something with 50 to go. I mean, it was like 40 to go, to be honest. And he pulled something out to be able to, to take the lead and come across that line. But I also think that 19-5 in the semis for Noah gave him a lot more confidence to know exactly where he is. Um, and Arian, man. Arian Knighton was, he hasn't ran all year outdoors. For him to show up, especially after all the, uh, the situation that he went through and he was cleared, um, it, it still weighs heavy on you, you know, because you know what kind of person you are. And he, and he actually talked after uh, his race and he said that he's a person of integrity. You know, that's something that he would never do, but it still weighs heavy on you. And for him to go out there and still run and compete and stay focused, that shows the poise that he has. And to run 1977 with, with at that being his third race of the season, this late into the season, yeah. Give him four weeks. Let's see what he do. He's going to do something nice. Mm -hmm. I, I like um, when they interviewed those guys. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the most emotion I've seen from Kenny um, on TV ever in life. Because he always just looks like, yes, thank you. You know, one word answers. You know what I mean? Open and shut. But that boy cussed on national television, boy. That boy said, I'm on your ass. I'm on your ass. <laughs> Hold listen, on, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see the uh, the, listen, the finish. Listen, they, the post race interview when they was interviewing him. I mean, he was more so upset that he didn't win. You know what I mean? I don't mm -hmm. think it was directed at Noah or anything else. But I just think he wanted that win so bad. You know what I mean? Um, I saw his Instagram. It was like one, two, boogeyman coming for you. So Kenny ain't done yet. This ain't over, boy. This but, not over for him. This might be a uh, origin story if Noah don't watch out. But I, we all know Noah. He's going to take it seriously. Noah not going to slouch because he's going to be like, you know what? He did almost have me. You know what I mean? <laughs> we can't let this happen. We can't. Listen, <laughs> they, they come from the same world, right? Kenny is deep into that anime world as well, right? He, he portrayed Naruto through his rounds. He leveled up to the final round. He was the nine tail. And he got the job done as best as he could get done, right? I understand where Kenny's from and from. This is good for Kenny. Why I say it's good for Kenny? Because now it gives him growth. It gives him fire in his stomach. He's going to go back to Claremont. He's going to know that that guy that he wanted to beat is across town, training hard. So it's going to make him train hard. And he's going to go out there the next four weeks and he's going to put everything on the line. He's going to work extra hard to get the job done. I like this in Kenny. Kenny used to be that mild guy. He's like, I'm just happy to be here kind of guy. But now he transformed into that what? That boogeyman. Well, that boy said, one, two, I'm coming for you. And he coming, boy, I believe him. Listen, because like I said, boy, I was looking at that man's eyes. That man looks scary as hell, boy. You be like, boy, <laughs> if they run that race again, if they had one more round, boy, I don't know, boy. I don't, I don't know. But, shoot. I like it, though. I like it. This 200 going to be fire. Do you think, you know, moving, not moving on, we're going to come back to the USA. What's the name? Didn't have to run his 200. At Canadian trials, Andre didn't have to run it. He ran the hundred. You know, I don't know what the conditions were, but he won. But it wasn't a super duper time. We don't really know at this deep since he hasn't ran a lot of two hundreds. We don't know what his two hundred looks like. What are your thoughts on that? He is the Olympic champion. I think he's just gearing up. I don't, I think that he, um, I think running 20 0 to win, which was, which, which Aaron Brown, right? Aaron Brown won with a 20 0 6, I think. And um, I think that'll have been 
a very a hard win for DeGrasse. Excuse me. I think that would have been a hard win for DeGrasse right now. And I think we kind of, it's like a little bit like deja vu. We've seen the grass where he's not fully ready. And we say, okay, well, maybe he's not ready. And he comes back and drops a crazy time. We saw it. We saw when he left his coach in um, Orlando. And then he went back over to a different coach. And then he went out there and dropped one of the fastest times of the season. So we know this there. He just needs a little time. I think four weeks is actually going to play in his favor like a Shelly Ann. And he's going to be ready to go out there. Listen, if you look up the definition of clutch in the dictionary, you're going to see Andre DeGrasse's face next to it. With that smile he'd be having at the start line. Because this dude always shows up for whatever reason or however he does it. And he gets the job done. You understand? So I can never discount him. He did what he had to do. At trials, he showed face. He won the 100 in a time that was comfortable. He didn't tax his body, and he can go back and train now. I think for him, he's been playing chess for a very long time, and now we definitely can see it because now we see the system that he runs. He's going to get ready at the right time. That's him. Yeah, I, I definitely – I agree with you. I agree with you. He, he, he definitely – doesn't show his hand. That boy playing spades right now, boy. He got a good <laughs> hand and he don't never show it. He don't show it until his time. Oh, he got that big joker in his hand. He, he, he might he, got that big joker in his hand, dog. He might drop I, it on you. I don't know. I don't know. These boys running these, dropping these 195s now in four weeks, what they going to look like. Okay. Did you, did you, have, did you have Andre DeGrasse win in Tokyo? No. In the 200? No. Exactly. He had the big joke. He had the big joke in his hand. No. That's why I'm saying you can't count him out. For whatever reason, he shows up and he finds whatever he needs to find to get the job done. Don't count that man out. You can't. He does. Yeah. He does. He does. Shoot. Men's 400 you, meter hurdles. The 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 Ben show. King the Rye Benjamin show. The Rye Benjamin show. I mean. I love watching Rye grow into the athlete that he is now. He's, he has the opportunity now to be very Sydney-esque in our, you know what I'm saying, especially on the American side, right? Watching him, he has already a hurdle and a half in front of everybody. By the time he gets on the home stretch, he's just chilling. You know what I mean? So it gives him opportunity, even under a real race, situation, he's able to execute his races and exercise it without a lot of stress and taxing his body. He didn't drop, what, 46? What was that, 46.4? Mm-hmm. 46.4 to go out there and do that. Um, what was that? Trevor Bassett? Trevor Bassett came through. He and had C. Allen. C.J. Allen. And C.J. Allen. I love watching C.J. Allen's uh, post-race interviews along the way, man. He never took his glasses off. He said he had for business. He said, I'm, I'm here to make this team. You know, a lot of them be like, I'm just here enjoying myself and I hope I make the team. He took all that out the window. He threw that out the window. Hope, kind of. He took, he looked, I'm here to make this team. When that gun went off, he's like, I'm getting that spot. That's what I like to see, man. I like that. Shouts out to Allen, man. Yeah, the season's best of 47-81. Definitely good. But, but Ryan definitely going to have his hands full with, with Warholm and uh, with all of them. DeSantos. I have for and DeSantos. Um, he took the world lead from DeSantos. Um, this is the meet record, fastest as he broke the meet record um, that was for the Olympic trials. So it now belongs to King Ben, Ry Benjamin. Um, but listen, he, he, he did this last Olympic trials. You know what I mean? Um, when he looked at the clock, it looked like he was looking for a faster time. I'm mm-hmm. not sure. He didn't look as happy. He just... Looked and glazed over at the clock, but he knows for him, he doesn't want to come back with another silver medal. The only medal that matters for for Rye is going to be gold. And he's going to have to go out there and beat two gold medalists and your world gold medalist, the Santos, and your Olympic gold medalist in Warhol. He's going to have to defeat those two, which is, like you always say, a tall order. A tall order. <laughs> Listen. That's a that's a tall order, but 
at the end of the day, every championship, he understood what he, he had to go out there and do. He inched his way to be successful. So I hope this year is, is the year that Ryan Benjamin can be able to get on top of that podium. He's worked very hard. Um, I actually watching him be emotional in the last couple of championships. Um, I know he wants it bad, so hopefully he, get, he can get that job done. You know, he's coming into the zone now for sure. 46, 46 4 is serious work. Crazy, bro. Um, man, this young lady, <laughs> she probably still in testing right now. <laughs> <laughs> she probably is. I mean, it's true. You know it's true. You know that's true. Cindy McLaughlin, man. These women's 400 meter hurdles. Shout out to all the ladies that was in the 400 meter hurdles for the USA. Anna Cockrell, Jasmine Jones. Listen, these girls had to run the race of their life to make that team. And Cindy McLaughlin run the race of mankind. Like <laughs> the mankind has ever seen. <laughs> mankind has ever seen. I don't mean to be mean. Like people came for me a little bit when I was like, M. Key Ball has to be prepared to die to beat this girl. But when I see Sydney do things like this, this is what I mean. Like, she gonna have to be able to tap the tank and how run her legs into the trash can to beat this girl. Because this is only the Olympic trials. She broke the, the world record at the Olympic trials, not the Olympics. She has another four, four weeks to go back and do what she does. And she didn't have a lot of races. She's been running all these odd races in the beginning, she ran the 100 meter hurdles, 12, 6, ran the 200 meters, then ran the 400, then ran one 400 meter race, got the world 400, um, 400 uh, hurdles race, and then this, this is what you come and do? And the trials? Come on, man. That has to be so, that has to be so frustrating because as an elite <laughs> athlete, you literally train, let's just say like you, Femke Ball is shooting for the world record, right? So she's going to train to whatever the world record that is previously there, right? Or right there at that time. And, and you're working to be as good or better. And then comes along Sydney and smashes her own world record. So now, like, in, a, in, in an event like that, and when you are a top opponent, now you have to start training for some kind of fabricated time that you have to reach into the air and grab. Like video, something crazy. Video game times. <laughs> video game times, exactly. What she ran, what she ran, 50.6, 62? 50.65. And it was so now, 68. So, yeah, so now Femke Ball has to go out there and say, okay, I'm trying to go out there and run 60.53. You know what I mean? Or something along those lines. Because, or even more, because you know at the end of the day, when that gun goes off in that finals, Sydney is going out there with the intent of smashing her own record, record again. But she, listen, this, like I said, I, I think I said this in the episode before. I don't even know if she remembers me asking her this in Oregon the year she, she did break the world record. She wants to run 49. That's what they're coaching to. Yeah, she's surprised, but she wants to run 49 in the 400 meter hurdles, and then she's going to move on to something else. See what I'm saying? What are we moving on to? The 400? Yeah. She's going back to the 400? She, I think she's going to whittle her way down, bro. Like, listen, I mean, she, <laughs> she is, <laughs> I've seen somebody put out Sydney McGoatlin Laroni. <laughs> she, she, she already is, bro. Like, I don't know <laughs> how much, she like to plant this now. She like to plant this. How much time is she going to break her own world record? <laughs> like, how much like she going to do it? You know what I mean? Like, like how, how much is she going to do it? So she's going to do that, and then she's going to go. Her and Bobby Curcio are going to go and try to break the 400 meter world record. Right? We see what she ran in the 200. She's going to continue dropping down, and she's going to like that. Why? You know why she's going to like that? Because the training, it'll be faster, but it'll be easier than training for that one lap. Yeah. She doesn't, yeah. She, maybe she doesn't go all the way to the 100, but she's going to go to the equivalent of the 200. I feel like this is their plan. We're going to get the world record here again and the gold medal. Then we're going to move on to this 400. We're going to get that and the gold medal. Then we're going to move on to this 200, see if we could get that. And then we're going to go down to the 100 hurdles and see if we could get that. 
Because that's the equivalent of the two. The two hundred is the equivalent of the hundred hurdles. You're right. Uh, I have, I'm speechless. Dog. I have nothing to say. And right. if they do that, listen, her and Bobby, they just need to be like freeze dried as people and put in the <laughs> Hall of Fame. <laughs> Cryo, they put them in the cryo chamber. <laughs> cryo, bro. They need to save them. These are special humans. These are special. These are special humans. <laughs> you, you, thaw, you thaw them out when, uh, when 50.60 something is uh, just Olympic standard. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's crazy. Then you throw them back out and be like, hey, we need y'all again. <laughs> we need y'all again. <laughs> hey, if Man, a commercial steal that, we want our 10%. Anyway. <laughs> Moving on, what, though. So what did you feel? I was gonna, we're going to go back to the 200 real quick. What did you feel about um, uh, Shakira getting fourth? Uh, man, America's a war zone. She gave her what she got, man. I, 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 I do think she, Shakira could have made that team. I just think she, she spent her legs early in the semis. She dropped them early 21 nines and she did, when she didn't have to. I got you. She didn't have to. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think, you know, where she hasn't run a lot of 200s, she was trying to, like, test it. And she just, 221 nines when you, when 21 nine is your personal best and you spend that twice, um, I think her legs were probably a little taxed. For the final, she, she couldn't go faster than, but I feel like if she went 22 one, and be the down 22 flat. But I mean, nobody really knows when you run it. When she was about to run 21.9, she probably didn't feel like it. You know what I mean? She probably was like, okay, this is going to be a nice little 22 three. And when she saw 21.9, she's like, oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, Thanks. you know, hindsight's always 2020. Because then if she ran 21.9 again, then we would have been like, oh man, she's really good. So it was a risk. You know, she didn't know. Um, nice. But she was she was prepared, though. I mean, tw- it took 21 to make the team, you know. Um, but she just ran her 21s early. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and also, I mean, for whatever reason in our sport, when you are a dominant 100-meter runner and you go up to the two, it's not as like, it's like, eh, you know. If if you win the 200, great. If you don't, cool. But for whatever reason, when you have a 200 meter run and they come down to the 100, you're like, look, you got to win this 100 to show us that you're the fastest. You know? But, but listen, though, I can tell you what. Her showing all them 21 nines and the fashion she won the 100 in, I don't know if you watched the last 10 meters, man. She still is celebrating before the line. Obviously, 1071 is not where she's really at. She could have ran 10 6 at the trials. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. So that lets me feel like, okay, are we looking at 10 5 Shikari? That's probably what we're looking at, and we don't know it yet. The yep. world doesn't know it. Her I'll coach knows at, it. I'll say her, at least you're yeah. looking at a 10 60 for sure. Her, her teammates know it, and her coach know it, but does the world know it? I mean, I think we're looking at 10 5 Shikari. That's what I think. Gotcha. And yeah. shoot. Coach Frano, you got four weeks to get prepared for that. <laughs> yeah, you know him. He will. He him, will. John Smith with Tulu. You know what I mean? We haven't seen Tulu in a while. And we know it's like when these runners go away for a while, they come back and they drop hot, hot fire. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I'm not ruling Tulu out from that. I'm not ruling Julian Alfred out. The 100, man, every race is going to be your race to watch. So let's talk about... Um... A little bit of tragedy. Oh, man. Go ahead. Um, my heart goes out to a thing. It does. A thing who was injured most of the season this year was able to muster up, you know, the energy and the strength to get ready for the Olympic trials. Olympic trials was basically her first race this season. And um, she wasn't in a thing move sh- shape, right? Like, we know her to be a front runner, right? We know her to get out in front of the pack and run. She has a long strides and she got caught up in the pack and she went down. My heart goes out to her because 
you know, if you was injured and you already sat at home, you already come to terms that I ain't gonna make this team. But if you clawed and fight yourself back from injury to get in shape enough to be able to go out there and compete, make it through the first round, get to the second round, and then the finals, you just, some freak accident happened and you trip and fall, that one hurts. And watching her walk off that track with those tears in her eyes, it was painful to watch, man. It was very painful to watch. Um, I hope that she's able to bounce back from that and the support system that's around her is going to lift her up. And it's not the end. She's still young. She's very, still very talented. And she already had a stressful season. Every season is not going to be a fairy tale. What it is going to do is be a launching pad for something better. You know, and I think that this what this season for her is going to be a launching path for whatever 2025 brings to her or 2026 for sure. Um, what's your thoughts on it? Boy, these ladies better buckle up because when somebody they cry like that and they lead a track, her ven- she releasing all her vengeance on every 800 meter runner that <laughs> touched the track. <laughs> Y'all going to feel her pain because she going to take it out on every race. She got whoever the Olympic champion is. If they line up in a meet after that, I think Mo is going to try to show them that, yeah, you got the hardware, but we really know who it should have been. Like, and the only the only way they could disprove that is if they run 154. Yeah. If they run 154, yeah. then we could say, nah, I think Mo, you'd have had your hands full with that one. But <laughs> If they run 157, I think Mo going, she going to tear a whole new backside into these women the whole rest of the way. Not saying that a lot of these women can't compete with her, especially Hodginson from, from London. I'm just saying, like, it's just going to be tough. It's going to be, it's going to be tough. This is going to be, it's going to be a long ride for these women in the 800 because that was only her first race, and she ran 157. You know what I mean? What, what the rest of the season going to look like? Oh, 100%. <laughs> she about to lay to waste everything. Oh, you the Olympic champion? Come on. Okay, come here. Bring that you. ass here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what that, She going to start her revenge tour early. Her revenge tour is going to happen as soon as the Olympics is done. She going to jump in every race. She going to go out there, drop hot times. Do your thing, man. I, I, in my mind, I have like this split screen of like, that still photo of her crying and then a, a, a photo of her in victory in 2025 or 2026 or something like that, where she's coming across that line and like what she went through to where she is now, you know? So another fall that we had where this is the beef that we like, boy, it's a little better than Wagyu right here. <laughs> that's that, <laughs> that's that Jakob and that Josh Kerr, right? And unfortunately, Josh Kerr, with 100 meters left in his race, falls and with Elliot uh, Giles. And they did not make it. I want to, I want to see Josh Kerr and Jakob go at it so bad, dog. <laughs> that was in the 800, though. They going to go at it. The 50 no, that wasn't 800. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's the 800. You're right. Listen, that, that wasn't, that was, it may not have been for you, Josh. You, now like, you can put all your eggs in the basket, dog. But you already proved yourself, dog. You proved yourself yeah, already. Yeah, listen, listen, you got to prove yourself with that hardware. Um, at their trials, a lot of the runners didn't run their real races, right, in London, right? Uh, Hoskinson ran the 400. Uh, and Ma- Matthew Hudson ran the 200 and won. Yeah, yeah he ran the anyway, yeah, with, with a PB, 20.3. So does that mean he does that mean he qualified for the? Oh, he just ran it for exercise purposes. Yeah, man, that man running for foot speed, boy. All right, that cool. boy not running two hundred. That okay, boy running cool. the four hundred. He said, "This is mother effing you." <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> he putting that work uh, in. He is. Yeah, you know I mean, so um, I think Dina Asher was the only one who ran a uh, her and um um Daryl Nita who ran yeah. their real disciplines. Um, Dina Asher didn't run the 100, but she ran the 200. She won with 22.18. And Daryl Nieder won the 100 in 11.24 with a negative 1.6. So, you know, a lot of them didn't run because if you 
I'm thinking if you're already qualified, they didn't have to run their discipline. And, you know, if you don't have three people that qualified in that discipline, you wouldn't have to run your own discipline. You know what I mean? Um, I think that's that's what happened. I think that's what happened for Andre, too. Um, so, but th- th- their trials, Hinchcliffe, once their, once won their trials. He ran 10-18. It. it was rainy, I think. But he, he ran it in, in, in running away fashion, man. That kid's a star. He kid's is. a star, man. He London, tough. Like, yeah, he a tough London, dude. London going to get behind him, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But that 100 going to be hot fire, boy. He going to find out what, what they say, man. When you in college and you win, you at the top of this triangle. But when you turn pro or you run against them big boys, the triangle flip. They do. You at the bottom, and you got to work your way up, just yeah. like everybody else. I mean, every runner who could tell you they turn pro, I think very few in the year that they turn pro muscle their way to the top. And I, I can only name a few, like Jeremy Werner, Walter Dix. In their first year, can't name a lot. I, I don't. Was Andre one of those? He came out that year. Walter Dix came out. What do you, what do you say? What's muscle way to the top? Meaning, like get on the podium. On the podium, yeah. Well, yeah. Then the year, um, Andre's Tra- one. You say Trayvon and Andre. They got they tied for third. Remember in Beijing. Oh yeah, and that was the year they came out, right? Mm-hmm. That was the year they came out. Yeah. So yep. it's only a few of those. I can't mm-hmm. name. Any superstar, you know what I mean? Like Julian Alfred was amazing last year, but you know, it was it was short because it's just harder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, who won Favale? Favale, you won the one and the two. And the two, he's a great 200 meter runner. It's just, it's just so much harder when you when you come out, it's not, it's not, and that's how it should be because it's the pro. And then NCAA is right, right up under it. You know it what is, I mean? So it's so many nuances to turn pro, though. You know what I mean? It's it a is. whole different. And I, I, I try to get people to understand it's a whole energy system. And they be like, "Oh, he ran so good and when he was in college, but why are you running bad now?" I was like, "Because in college he ran every weekend. He was ran into shape. Now practice is more essential and vital when you're a pro. You got to almost go to practice and battle in practice. So when it's time for the lights to turn on, the curtains go up." You can go out there and run in tip-top shape as a professional. People don't want to see you slowly run yourself into shape. You know, maybe times are different now, but you remember it was, if you ran a subpar time, what's the likelihood of you getting invited to the next next meet? You not. Exactly. Sure. So you got to show and, up. And, and a lot of kids don't understand in college. Like, they, they're, they don't understand, like, when you say run in shape, they don't understand. Like, yeah, you run every weekend, but it's an event you run every weekend, too. You run the 4x4, 4x1, 100, 200. Even if you leave one of those races out, like the 4x4, you still run the 1, the 2, and the 4x1. Or you still get two blowout 100s and the 4x1 and the 100. You know what I mean? Or the 200 and the 100. So you are getting ran into shape. You ain't going to do that no regular track meet as a pro. You go into a one-off. You either running yeah. 100. Ain't, I ain't seen too many people in a pro track me doing no double. Very few. Yeah. And you, if they mean, do it, they not pulling the hat trick where they went in the one and the two. <laughs> facts. Exactly. Exactly. Man, I think we covered everything, man. We covered we everything did. for the most part, man. I mean, it was a jam-packed weekend. You know what I mean? Across the board. The, the world was watching. Everyone makes their dreams happen. A lot of people didn't get a chance to do so. You know what I'm saying? I want to say to everyone who wasn't able to make the team or fell short, um, don't stop. Keep trying. Keep going. This is just another log that you put on the fire to be able to to fuel you to go out there and run harder. You know? Um, Four years sounds like a long way, but if you keep staying dialed in, staying ready for the moment. The next thing you know, you're back at that Olympic trials once again, and your time is there. So 
Shout out to everybody who went out there and courageously put their heart and their life on the line to show the world what they're made of. And let's do it again. Do it again next year and the year after that, man. This is what you're here for. This is what you started running for. This is why you love track. True competition. So don't forget that. Mm -hmm. To all our subscribers, the 20,000 that got us here, we appreciate you. And we hope you tune in to our next show on Ready, Set,